could keep the leg and risk infection, gangrene, blood poisoning, and death, or I could lose the leg. Take it off, doctor, I said, take it all off. He took it off. He made a nice clean job of it. The hip socket looked neatly scooped out as if he'd used a giant melon baller. When I left the hospital, I had some nice new crutches and a piece of paper where he'd written the name of a website that made the best artificial limbs. I started crutching home, enjoying the autumn air and the late afternoon moon hanging low in the sky and the sound of dry leaves crunching under the crutches. I felt very light and free, as if I'd made a fresh start, and I couldn't wait to show my friends how much weight I'd lost practically overnight. I was just about to start whistling. I don't know how to whistle, but I had the feeling that if I tried right then, if I didn't think about it too hard, if I just relaxed and went with it, I'd be able to do it. I was just pursing my lips when I heard footsteps in the dry leaves behind me, or footstep. I paused, and there was silence behind me. I started to move again, and the sound resumed. I started to crutch faster. The footstep crunched faster, too. Who's there, I said. I'm just a girl on crutches, I said. Nothing to see here. I tried to move even faster, though I was getting out of breath, and my armpits hurt. It was getting darker, and I was still pretty far from home. And I tried to look around for some able-bodied, helpful pedestrians without looking like I was looking around. But I didn't see any. The step behind me was scrappy and aggressive. I didn't want to turn around. When someone's harassing you, it's best to just ignore them. I didn't want to see who it was. I don't care what people say. Sometimes an unknown danger is less frightening than a known one. But the footstep wasn't going away. Instead, it speeded up until it was practically stepping on my heel. I was beginning to feel very vulnerable. My head, in particular, felt very exposed. I wished I was wearing a helmet, and I was extra super conscious of the way my skirt was swishing around with all that new extra empty space under there. I said, not turning around, but throwing my voice back over my shoulder in as firm a voice as I could, leave me alone, leave me alone or I'll kick you in the nuts. A voice behind me said, leave me alone or I'll kick you in the nuts. At that, I spun around with both crutches raised, ready to use them as weapons to whack or smack or squeeze in a pincer's grip. And there, as you've probably guessed already, because you're probably quicker on the uptake than I was then, but only because I was doped up on painkillers because of the operation, usually I'm pretty sharp. Right there, hopping along behind me in the dead leaves was my leg. It had found itself a nice slinky high heel patent leather boot and a bit of hideous shiny pantyhose, and it was hopping closer and grimacing at me with the folds of fat around the knee. <laughs> we looked at each other. All I could think of to say then was, I don't have any nuts, duh. <laughs> Stupid, I muttered. I know you are, but what am I? The leg taunted. It talked out of the knee as it, as it bounced around, hopping mad. Where did you get that awful boot, I said. I would never let you wear that. I found it in the closet in your doctor's office, the leg said. He has some interesting habits you were unaware of. <laughs> Who zipped it up for you, I asked. The leg pursed its fatty folds and blushed, but wouldn't say. Well, you seem to be doing just fine on your own, I said. It's time we went our separate ways. I turned and tried to continue on home. I was eager to see how my apartment felt to me, with my new improved self and my new crutches and all. But the leg frantically hopped around in front of me. The slick-soled boot was skidding crazily. It blocked my path, and then it bent itself to the sidewalk, kneeling in front of me. How can you cut me out of your life like this? It bawled. It didn't seem so cocky now. In fact, it seemed quite pathetic in the sleazy boot. And now I could see the oozing, jagged wound on the thigh that had prompted the whole operation in the first place. I did it for my own good, I said. I mean, for the good of all. For the good of all my other parts. <laughs> the doctor said you were infected. It was the only way to save the rest. Did you want to spread your infection to everybody else? We should all go down together, the leg said. <laughs> <laughs> now completely prostrate on the ground.